We have something really exciting today. We're celebrating AAPI Heritage Month, and we have two wonderful creators here with me today to talk to you about some amazing photography and thoughts and reflections on identity. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it off to our uh, first speaker who's going to get started. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Chris Kuganathan. Um, I am a cityscape and landscape photographer out of Orange County, California. Uh, my parents are from the island of Sri Lanka, just south of India. Uh, they moved to Canada in the late 1980s when civil unrest and war broke out on the island. Um, and in 2001 or 2002, we moved down to uh, the United States, uh, California, and I have been based here ever since. Um, I've always been a bit of an artist. Um, you know, as a child, I used to draw a lot. Um, you know, I was reimagining like cartoons, and then it kind of went on to like um, doing portraits of people and in high school and in college. Um, I started to get interested in like graffiti, street style um, art. And I drew a lot of influences from like skateboarding culture, graffiti culture, hip hop. And through these mediums, I kind of fell in love with the imagery of cityscape. And in my later years, I've started to kind of widen that interest into natural landscapes as well. Um, and I really fell in love with kind of capturing what's out there. So generally large scenes um, have been the interest. And some of the examples of the shots I really like to get are the ones that you got to work for just a little bit. And that could be like waking up a couple of hours before sunrise and going on a couple mile hike and racing the sunrise as you're, you know, trekking through, you know, up a hill or through the woods um, or like going out in harsh, uh, stormy conditions or even sneaking around in places where you're not supposed to be. But ultimately, when you get that photo and it's crisp, it's sharp, you're putting it on your computer, you're getting ready to edit it, um, it feels good. And I treat every shot like a trophy of the journey I took to get that photo. So I'm really excited to share that with you today. Um, shout out to Visco for having me. I really appreciate it. And I'm really honored to share uh, the time with uh, Sambit as well. So um, let's hop into it. Next slide. So um, I want to use the time today to go over a couple of things. I get a lot of questions on how I shoot. How do I shoot behind a camera? And then what do I do in post um, to achieve the look that I get? And I am of the school of thought that photography is a two-part process. I know there are purists on both sides. There are guys now that will only shoot, you know, um, behind the camera and they will not process it one bit. And then there's other guys now that are just doing complete AI art and they don't know how to use a camera. Um, it does to me, I mean, I believe that there's an entire spectrum and you can kind of choose which is yours. Uh, but to me, I believe you gotta be able to do a little bit of both. Um, so I'll touch on a couple of things. Um, in camera, we'll talk about leading lines, framing with foreground elements, uh, subject, scale, and my favorite here, which I think you might get a kick out of, um, is focal length. And then in post, we'll talk about a couple of Visco tools, dodge and burn, and the remove tool. Throughout the entire thing, I want you to keep this in mind. You as the creator have full control over where you want your viewer to look and what you want them to see. And what we're going to do is we're going to highlight a couple of different ways that you can flex that control, both in camera and in post. Next slide. So first things first, let's talk about leading lines. And these are everywhere. Um, just to highlight these photos, first one's Seattle. We got New York, San Francisco, Chicago, um, a New York subway, subway station, and Los Angeles. And there's lines everywhere. In all of these shots, you have these lines that are leading you to a subject in the distance. And these are all naturally occurring, uh, whether you're walking around a city or you're walking around um, you know, outside, you're at a national park. These could be paths, railings, streets, rivers, trails, waves, alleyways, escalators, aisles, um, you, know, you name it. Um, if you see a line, you're naturally going to follow it. And my little pro tip on this is, if you're using a camera with that has like a, um, you either have like pro mode on your phone or you have an interchangeable lens where you can choose your aperture. Um, when you lean into that line, I would suggest, just as a tip, 
um, use a shallow depth of field. So this could be anything from like a 1.8, 1.4, 2.8, 3.2, even up to F4. Um, F4 is criminally underrated. People don't like it just because that's where the cheap lenses, quote unquote, start getting made at, but it, it works. Um, and if you use those F-stops and you focus on your subjects, so you keep those tacks sharp, you'll notice anything around it will start to blur out just a little bit. So if you look at the Seattle shot, you'll see the edge of that ledge is pretty blurry. You look at that Chicago shot, the edge of that um, handrail is pretty blurry. And the Los Angeles shot, if you look at the train, it's a little bit blurry. And the way the human eye works is you're always seeking clarity. You're always seeking the sharpest point in that image. So if you start at this large portion of the line being blurry, you're naturally going to chase that line down, seeking sharpness, and you're going to end up at your subject. So that's a little trick that you could use when you're out using leading lines in your photography. Uh, next slide. Another one I want to talk about here is uh, framing with a foreground element. Um, so here we have... Los Angeles overpass. We have the Chicago sign through a bike rack, I think it is. Um, we have Maui through some foliage, Laguna um, Beach through some foliage as well, Los Angeles through some barbed wire, and San Diego and an airplane landing through a chain link fence. Um, framing is a very, very, very easy way to add context, interest, and depth to your photo. Um, and it also gives you an opportunity to tell two stories in one shot. Um, all of these photos, I've been, I'm trying to tell the story about the thing in the distance, right? Um, but that could, you know, people have seen that before and other photographers are probably taking that. But when you start to incorporate natural frames, this could be anything from like arches, windows, plants, trees, chain link fences, mirrors, even you're, you're also telling a story about what's right in front of you and what you're actually experiencing as a photographer. Um, but I understand that, you know, a lot of times you might not have barbed wire in your face. You might not have a chain link fence or a bike lock if you're, um, you know, out in, you know, the middle of the desert. So my pro tip here, when you're out of ideas, you, you don't know what to do, get low. And you'll see it on the next slide. So this is a shot that is, um, this is a trail that's, uh, like just north of Los Angeles. And it's a hiking trail. You go up to the top of the trail and you have this view of the city in the background. Going back to leading lines, the reason people love this photo is because that freeway is a straight shot right into the city. Um, and if you are if you follow this, the photography scene in Los Angeles, you've probably seen the photo on the left before. A lot of people get it. It's a popular location. But when you're standing there and you're taking that photo, I mean, yes, the lighting conditions are going to be different. It's going to be a different time of year, but more or less, you're probably going to get that same shot. And you as a photographer, you probably want to see, you know, how can I put my own twist on it? So in this case, you know, I'm out in a the field, there's really nothing around me. I mean, there's no benches, there's no, there's no fences, there's no nothing. But like I said, when in doubt, get low, because there is going to be grass, there is going to be rocks, there is going to be a log somewhere, there's going to be something on the ground somewhere that you're going to be able to frame the shot. So if you look at the shot on the right, I literally just took my camera and I dropped it. And if you are using an iPhone, the cool thing about iPhones is like your lenses are at the top. So all you got to do is just flip it upside down and then just put it on the ground. Those perspectives that you get versus this are night and day. So try that, just get low, get something in front of your shot and you'll be really, really surprised um, at what you're gonna get. And the thing about the photo on the right, I mean, that plant, it's probably not there anymore. Or if it is, it's probably way bigger. So nobody's ever gonna get that shot ever again. Nobody can ever recreate that. Um, you know, that's frozen in time and, and that's my shot forever, you know? So uh, next slide. Can I actually interrupt with something I just thought of now? It'd be really cool if people went out and tried this on their own and then like pinged you on Visco and showed you what they did and like shared. Don't yeah. I don't mean to open up your Visco DMs, everyone, but. No, I hit me up. Cool. I, I love community. So yeah, show me what you guys get. And, and I'd love to see how you guys are able to apply these tips in your work. Yeah. Um. So the last, um, thing that I want to talk about. And this is kind of a broad subject. So I'm kind of going to run away with focal length and I'll get there in a second, but um, subjects and scale. 
So I don't do in this type of art, I don't do a lot of portrait photography. Um, I'll do client work and stuff like that on the side. But when it comes to the stuff that feeds my soul, um, I don't work with humans at, at that element. Um, but Sambit really does. So I'm going to leave that to him. I mean, he does so much good work with like emotion and like conveying love and all of that. But uh, for me, when I when I work with humans, I'm using them in a way that is going to make the scene look massive. It's going to give relatability and a sense of size and scale to the scene that you're looking at. And um, like I mentioned in that first bullet, I mean, people are drawn to people um, no matter what. And I started my photography uh, journey by only taking photos of things that did not have human beings in it. And once I added these tiny little specks of human beings, the entire world opened up. And it's because human beings are just connected to other humans. Like you, when you look at the shots, so the first one here is in Maui, second's in LA on a hill, third one is in San Francisco. Uh, we got Zion National Park, New York City, and then Bryce Canyon National Park. Without these individuals, you probably wouldn't be able to grasp how large these places are. So I really like to use human beings and scale just to show um, you know, how massive these scenes are. Um, and a quick shout out to my buddy, Alan. He actually might be here. If you are, say what up in the chat. Um, but he, if you look at the San Francisco shot, um, you'll notice the guy at the top of the hill is actually doing a little ollie. Um, but a little skateboarding trick and poor guy I probably broke his ankles that day I had my other buddy Sean on the phone standing with me and we we're waiting this is this is a terrible idea I mean we had things to do so we couldn't wait for you know there to be no cars on the street so we did this probably at five o'clock when there's cars coming up and down the street we had people crossing we had to wait for this, the perfect moment where there's no car and there's no pedestrians crossing where it's just him he had to nail the trick and then I had to nail the shot so like it probably took maybe 30 tries for us to get it, but we finally did. And um, it's probably one of my favorite shots to this day. So, um, but yeah, on the subject of scale, it's probably really important to know how focal length works. So let's hop into the next slide. So actually my other buddy, uh, Nick, is pictured in both of these shots and I believe he's here. So if you're here, Nick, say what up in the chat as well. Um, so if you look at the shot on the left, this one's shot at 14 millimeters. And if you look at the shot on the right, it's shot at 24 millimeters. So basically, in a nutshell, the lower the number, so the smaller the number, the wider your photo is. And then the higher your number, the more zoomed in your photo is. And what I want you to look at is if you're looking at the 14 millimeter shot, you can see that he looks so tiny and he's in this massive like silo look and spiral. And it looks, you know, it's, it's, you know, knees weak, you know, um, sweaty palms, you know, th that's kind of the feeling you're getting. But like, I want you to look at the 24 millimeter and you look at the size of him, he's a lot bigger compared to that spiral. And the reason for that is because when you're shooting so wide and you're shooting at 14 millimeters, you're taking all this entire scene because you're, you're not shooting this anymore, you're shooting this, but you're compressing it into the same frame. And when you're doing that, you're making everything smaller. So it gives you a little bit of like a photography illusion that things are a little bit bigger than they actually are. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And everybody can do this. If you have an iPhone, just shoot a 0.5 if you're trying to do this. And then, you know, vice versa, if you want to zoom in, we'll get to that, just shoot at 3X. Um, everybody has the ability, it's in your pocket. You don't need a fancy camera with a million lenses to do this. Um, but it's just knowing when to use the focal length um, to get the desired effect. Uh, next slide. So this is um, out in the Nevada desert. And these photos were taken maybe five minutes apart. Um, they both are a photo of this uh, you know, mountain in the distance and you can see the light hitting that mountain. So, I mean, the, the timing is you know, within minutes. Uh, but on the 14, on the 14 millimeter, it's just me kicking it on a rock. I'm trying to show off my shoes. I didn't realize I already got them dirty and I, I didn't want to spend a lot of time in Photoshop to clean it up. So there I am with my shoes. And then on the right, I'm telling a story about this lonely car driving in the desert. Um, but both of these photos are taken from the entire, from the exact same place. 
even though they're telling completely different stories. And that's one thing I want you to be a little more cognizant about is what is the story I'm trying to tell? And am I using the right gear to tell that story? Because once you get, you know, one of these long lenses, like basically if you can get one of these things and you start like looking in the distance everywhere you go, you realize that uh, a regular scene that you see every day, now you've opened up and you've unlocked the ability to tell 20 different stories from the same place just by peering into one specific direction. Um, so next slide. And this is my last one of focal length. And this one kind of tripped me out just a little bit. Um, both of these photos are of the same exact two things. Um, there is a city in the background and there's these two fences that open up. And if you notice on the one with the 14 millimeter, the city is tiny. And if you look at the one at the 105 millimeter, the city's really big. And this is actually my buddy, Alfredo. He might even be here as well. Um, if you're here, say what up in the chat, Alfredo. Um, but this photo is basically the same photo. The only difference is when I put the zoom on at the 105, I basically just ran that way and I zoomed in. And because I'm zooming in, I'm making everything that I'm focusing on bigger. And then everything else gets smaller in relation to what I'm actually zooming in on, which is how those those fences got a lot smaller on the 105 versus when you're on the 14, how big the fences are and how tiny that city is in the, in the distance. So again, once you wrap your head around focal length, um, I think it really does wonders with, um, you know, being able to unlock the possibilities of stories you can tell and being able to tell them um, in the way that you want. Uh, next slide. So now let's hop into post. Um, so I covered a couple of things that you can do in camera. And um, I just wanted to highlight a couple of Visco tools that can help you achieve the look that I get on my photos. Um, dodge and burn is huge. And quick note on this one, if you are from California, so there's a couple of people from California here, um, we've had a pretty wet winter. And, you know, snow behind the Hollywood sign is not a normal thing. This doesn't happen every year. Um, but I was at work one day and it was a wet winter. I mean, it was, it was, you know, we've had a little bit of hail. We've had a little bit of snow even, I believe, uh, but nothing ever stuck, but we were at work. And then all of a sudden I just hear all up on the window and we all turn around and then we just see it's just, it's just hailing and it's nonstop hail. I checked the weather and I realized this is going on for the next couple of hours. I mean, this isn't going to stop. But then when it does stop, I did realize it was going to stop just around three o'clock, maybe. So it was going to precipitate pretty hard for about two hours. It was about one o'clock and around three, it was going to stop. And at four, it was going to be sunset. So I figured I'm like, hey, if, if I'm going to get some snowy mountains, it's probably going to be this day. So I, I hit up my boss. I'm like, hey, I got a, I, I got this vision of the Hollywood sign. I think there's going to be snow around it or on it or, or something, but I, I really just got to take the day and I got to go get it. And he's like, Chris, I mean, uh, you, one condition, send me the photo. So I'm like, all right, cool. I can go do this. So hop to my car, grab my gear, jet down um, to Hollywood. It was, it was a rough drive. Um, I mean, the freeways were flooded. Um, it was hailing half the way. I mean, there were car accidents. It was, it was terrible. But finally got there, did a little bit of a trek in the rain. And lo and behold, the clouds kind of cleared. The, the, the light kind of peered through. It hit the mountains in the back. And you could, you could see a little bit of snow, but there was so much cloud, cloud coverage where like I was talking to a couple of the photographers of the same idea. And they're like, dude, I don't know if the cloud's going to move, but lo and behold, they did. And boom, we got this photo. And I'm, I'm really stoked to get it. Um, but when you get it out of camera, it's going to look like the one on the left. And it's still a good photo, but it's, it's pretty flat. So that's where dodge and burn comes in. Dodge and burn is a great way to manually uh, create contrast. And it's cool to use a general slider. This general slider is great. Uh, but the issue with that, it's going to affect the entire image um, in ways that maybe you don't want it to. So instead of doing these massive global adjustments, you could do local adjustments. So in, um, in Visco, just go ahead, take that brush and make it as small as you possibly can. And when you're doing your shadows, just go ahead and burn it. And when you're doing your highlights, go ahead and dodge it. 
And there's two questions I always ask. What are you taking a picture of? What is your subject? What is the reason you're shooting? And that is what you want to dodge because that's what you want to draw the eye to. And then what is the natural light doing? Is your light hitting certain parts of the image? Go ahead and make accentuate those. Go ahead and dodge those. And is your light not hitting certain points of the image? Those shadows, beat them down. Make them, make them super, super, super dark. And then the effect of dodge and burn gets you that really punchy image that you have on the right. Next slide. Then the last thing I want to talk about is just one way to just quickly clean up your image. I mean, this is just the final touches that you can throw on things. The image on the uh, left, um, this is not a bad photo, um, but it's a little distracting. There's a lot of, there's a lot of paint on the uh, street. There's, uh, you know, street signs in the way. There's some people kind of walking around in the background and, you know, you could edit it. And if you're a purist, you can go ahead and post it and it's great. And it's, you know, no, I have no problems and no qualms with it. But if you're a little bit of a perfectionist like myself, uh, simplicity is best and, and having a nice clean image uh, will draw your viewer's eye directly to your subject a lot faster. You don't have to go searching what is the point of this image, you know? Um, so yeah, I mean, I just use the remove tool. I'll, uh, again, take that brush down as small as I possibly can and just start painting things away. Just, nope, do you provide any value to my photo? Nope, you're gone. Do you provide any value to my photo? Nope, you're gone. And just remove the basic things. I mean, trash, signs, graffiti, people, street signs, traffic lights, bushes, rocks, whatever it is. If it doesn't provide value, it doesn't need to be there. And I believe that is it for me, right, Maya? Um, I want to just uh, say thank you again. And I want to pass the torch to Summit. Um, you're up, dude. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Sambit, and I'm a portrait and fashion photographer currently in New Delhi. Um, uh, and everyone, while I'm talking, you can also check my website. Uh, it's sambitbiswas.com. Uh, and if you have any questions, just put it in the Q&A section. Uh, and you can literally ask me anything. Just what's my, what film do I shoot with? Or like, what's my favorite cream cheese on, on a bagel? Like, it's some dried tomato. So, um, that's that. Um, uh, can you go to the next slide? So the way I want to go about this is uh, I'm going to share my journey as a photographer because as an amateur photographer back in 2013, 14, I really would have liked to see or like hear how like a person came to where they are now, like and see their journey as a photographer or as an artist in general. Uh, I started photography in high school, uh, shooting plants and landscapes. Within a year or two, I realized that, like, I need I'm I'm shooting more like people. And shout out to my friends Anshita and Mehar uh, back then who really helped me out with that. Um, they helped me get into portraiture a lot. I was taking so many pictures of my friends in high school. And then one fine day, um, in 2015 at the National Gallery of Modern Art in New Delhi. There was this retrospective on this photographer named Prabhupada Das Gupta, um, who at the time I didn't know, but is one of the greatest photographers of the 90s, 90s and 2000s in, in India. Um, like he's fantastic. I really like, I was floored. I was so floored. And uh, that's when I knew I will be doing this for a long time. I, my first year of um, do, like, my first year of college, I was studying communication design in Delhi. And this retrospective was the thing that made me realize that I'm going to pursue photography full time. This is also 2015 was also the year when I bought my first uh, film camera called like it was the Canon 81. It's not the AE one, which I couldn't find in Delhi because uh, no one I knew was shooting film. And it was really hard to find, I guess. Um, and then that's when I decided to leave the college in New Delhi and started looking for courses, photography courses in the US, specifically in New York. And I joined the School of Visual Arts in the fall of 2016, which in hindsight is like one of the best things that's happened to me, I guess. Uh, 
the first week I was there, the, everyone, like, I saw people's pictures, like, the first day of school, and I was, like, damn, this is amazing. <laughs> uh, I was also very scared, and I, like, but it was, it was fantastic. Um, this is the time when I started to meet a lot of people and create a lot of images, um, because um, it was just so many things happening at once. And I also made a video about it, like about the first week um, in School of Visual Arts in New York, which is on YouTube right now. If you go on my YouTube, if you look me up somehow, uh, it shouldn't be too hard to find, but you can look it up. Um, uh, we can go to the next slide. Uh, I also started printing photos. One of the classes I was taking, we could print without having to buy the paper. Like, and paper was like really expensive. Uh, as, especially as a college student, it was like so much. So in that class, we could print unlimited pictures and I probably printed like 300 to 400 images like per week. And everybody saw me doing that. It was kind of funny that I was doing it and everybody was just doing the like class assignments. Uh, but I really got into like printing my own photographs. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, it, it, it just holding a print in your hand is so different than just looking at it on the screen. I realized I didn't know it back then, but after I started printing my pictures, my relationship with color changed, my relationship with uh, even the frame and the way I started to like frame the photographs changed. Uh, it was, uh, it was amazing. Uh, and speaking of colors, I actually started shooting film because of Disco back in 2014, like 13, 14, I think, uh, with the Lightroom presets. And I really wanted to like, I didn't just want to emulate film, but I also like really wanted to get shoot it. So that's how I got started. Uh, most of the photos you'll see are shot on the Pentax X7. I traded my digital camera, which was the Fuji X Pro 2. Um, brilliant camera, but um, I just felt like after shooting, like this one time I shot with a Mamiya RC67, um, some pictures of that are like on my website also, you can have a look. Um, but then I got the Pentax and I like, it's, it's such a beast, like my connection with that camera is like phenomenal, like uh, it has days when it stops working, skips frames and like it has shorter issues sometimes, but um, uh, can we go to the next picture? Oh, sorry, uh, the previous one. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, this this one uh, with it like the shutter like stopped working for like a year. One year I was just taking pictures and not knowing like if it's gonna actually take the full shot or if it's just gonna cut off half of it. It's it's brilliant. Um, uh, can we go next? Oh, this is the next one? Okay, maybe uh, uh, after this one. You oh, this didn't work out. Ne next one again, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I was supposed to like skip a couple of more pictures, but now coming back to this. Uh, okay, coming back to this image, I really wanted to give you more context about these images. This, these were shot in 2020 in collaboration with my partner in crime at that time, Soumya. Uh, Soumya Sharma, she's a brilliant all-round artist. Makes films, images, bags, shoes, tattoos, and also clocks. Uh, she does like so many things. Uh, you should check out her website, she's brilliant. Uh, these were all conceptualized by us in the middle of the COVID lockdowns. Um, and we just had like so much fun shooting with uh, the model Annalisa from Muse. She's fantastic. Uh, okay, next slide again. And this, these images of Madhulika, she's also one of the best models I've ever worked with, uh, Madhulika Sharma. She, you, you, you've probably seen her, she's everywhere. She also did like a, a campaign with Skims. Uh, yeah, uh, we also created a film with these, like around these images um, and the, the shoes and bags that Soumya made, the project is called one plus one equals one. Um, there's a link for it on my website. You can have a look at it. Uh, the film that we shot, the fashion film, was also screened at Film Noir Cinema in Greenpoint in Brooklyn. 
uh, and also selected by Nick Knight himself, one of my favorite photographers of all time, uh, to go on the show studio website. Um, and actually in three weeks, uh, this also got selected for the Milan Fashion Film Festival, um, which is, yeah, uh, just wanted to say that. Uh, next slide. Uh, this image of Poona Jagannathan, who I had a crush on when I saw the movie Delhi Belly way back when I was a kid. Um, uh, this, she is such a good person to work with. I went to her friend's house in Brooklyn to shoot this. Uh, you've probably seen her in uh, Never Have I Ever and like Better Call Saul. Uh, yeah, she's fantastic. Uh, next slide. Yeah, these are also some recent images that I took uh, in 2000, like 2021 and 2022. Uh, next one. Okay, so these are photographs I made also around 2018, 19, 20. I don't remember, like I've done so many uh, shoots with Maria. She's such a good friend. Um, I texted her one day, like recently, like I think, in the beginning of 2022 or before that, like late 2021, uh, she just had a baby uh, at that time. And I really wanted to like take some pictures of the baby and her, her name, like his name is Lucas. Um, so I said, hey, I'm gonna hang out and just take some images with you and your son. I've never met him. I really wanted to meet him. Um, so that happened. So uh, in the next, yeah, these slides, um, yeah, this was such a good time. I like none of my friends have kids. And so um, this was the first time being around a friend who has a kid. And I didn't realize how special these pictures will be down the line. Um, also, this made me realize how much I love taking pictures of the people I really like and love. Um, okay, next slide. I just wanted to show this image of an apple on the beach uh, as a segue to the next part of what I'm going to be talking about. Um, uh, we can go to the next slide. So uh, in the last one year, I think like since April of 2022, when I moved to Delhi, uh, I really fell in love with Taken, taking so many more pictures of my friends. This picture is of one of my few like amazing friends uh, from the left to right, that's Sarah, Claudia, Gabe, and Sangu. Um, yeah, uh, next slide. So just documenting my life in the last one year has been like very special. Um, like all of these pictures are taken with a taken with a digital point and shoot camera, no frills, no, like no need to change settings. Like I just point a camera and I, I, I just get the picture and all of them are just like lovely to look at. And I share them with them, I share them with my friends like immediately. I just pop out my SD card and put it in my uh, phone and just share it with my friends like within a day max. Sometimes it takes longer, I'm sorry about that, but uh, it, 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 it's, it's so nice. Um, yeah, um, like the people I love has been such a driving force in my creativity and also like, I mean, not just in photography, but also in like making music and food. Um, like in the beginning, I told you I'm a fashion and portrait photographer, like, but honestly, I, I see myself more as a documentarian uh, of my life and also like the people close to me. And that's the way the cookie crumbled. That's all I had to say. Excellent. Thank you so much, Sandit. Um, I'll continue to put the links in the chat, but we're going to switch gears real quick. Um, Sandit, Chris, I know Chris is in there. If you have a chance to kind of peep the chat uh, later before we hop off, um, please do. Everyone's really excited to see those shots. I love the shot of the baby and the bomb. Um, really yeah, I'm so glad I added that uh, late, but I, yeah. Lovely, lovely. Uh, but we're going to kind of switch gears really fast. 
Um, we wanted to continue celebrating AAPI Heritage Month uh, this month on Visco, and we wanted to give Chris and Sam an opportunity to critique some beautiful work that is from the featured space we have up on Visco called Reflections on Identity. Um, please go check it out in the app. I did post the web link earlier. It is kind of long and I don't have the short link. Um, so you could just check it out on your own time and I'll share that link after the event so everybody can check it out. Um, but please, please, please open the app and go look at it um, and start your own space too. It's a really fun space. I know Luciana is here as well. I can comment on that. Um, but we're going to kind of get into some work that I pulled that I wanted them to kind of comment on. So if you're in the feature space and you're here, please let yourself be known in the chat. But I pulled these two images. Sam, and I know you really, really liked the one on the left. So I don't know if you wanted to start off by saying what you love about this. But uh, yeah, what do you guys think? Like, I really, like, this is the first picture that popped out in the space. I... I don't know, something about also the colors and the two people, like one looking away and one looking like not exactly into the camera, but this is such a good picture. Also, this uh, this whole space and like talking about identity, I sh somehow, okay, I know Visco is like image oriented, but I love seeing uh, like what people had to write also, uh, like what, what they wrote on this. Um, I think everyone feels this way, or at least I do. Um, I recently just started like thinking of identity in my work also, like this is 2020, late 2020. And I really love like everyone who is a part of the whole um, space. Yeah, I think this is really cool. Um, I This creator, their name is like Nam Q, what was that? Um, MQK. M. Q. Kang, lots of talent. Um, very cool. When when the one on, when Summit pointed out the one on the left, I was like, okay, that's cool. That's that's a cool shot. Um, but kind of going back to what I was talking about earlier with like lighting and framing and focal lengths and shapes, and then I saw the one on the right, and I was mind blown. You know, um, it 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 looks like that's a mirror, so you got a reflection going on. You've got the the framing of the window, and you know, it's there's so much. Um, there's so many compositional things that are that are jam-packed into one frame. It's it's amazing. It, it's solid. And then, I mean, this creator, the cool thing is like they can do the stuff on the right, but they can also do the stuff on the left. You know, I mean, I, I think I'm a little bit more of like a one one trick pony. I I I choose a lane, I stick in it. But I mean, shout out to Nam Q King because you can do it all. This is great. Yes, I couldn't agree more. And what interests me about these is like especially the one on the left, I can't tell if they set that up that way with those two people and they had like met them and had a quick dialogue and directed them or they were just in the right place at the right time. But even like I could see, I kind of see themes from both of your guys' work in this too, where I'm seeing, I'm recognizing all of those lines and where my eye is being led. Um, and then I'm also seeing kind of like the intimacy behind it and the one um, on the right where you see the reflection in the mirror is really interesting because, gosh, it's it's simple, but it's really, really thought provoking because the person is like not exactly in the mirror and kind of shying away from it, but they're still there. Their presence is like very strong. Um, and I, I just, I would love to sit down with this person and just pick their brain and learn more about the stories behind this. I could agree with you both more. Um, I don't know if they're here. Um, this is going to be recorded, though. We're giving you a big shout out, showing you lots of love. Um, really, really love these shots. Uh, we'll go to the next one. What do you guys think about this one? I really, really loved this one. Yeah, I love, I love, uh, I love the detail. Um, like zooming in a little, little details. Um, this is like quintessential street photography. Um, I've been trying to do stuff like this. Um, I got a buddy. Um, out of New York who actually took me to Chinatown and we we kind of just ran around in the middle of the day because I, I can't do really do that the street style type stuff that I do the the sunset stuff you know during the middle of the day so we tried to do stuff like this and it's it's not as easy um, as one would think you know to to be able to catch raw images of strangers 
out in the in the field and and catch day to day moments and freeze those and and tell these stories. It's absolutely phenomenal. I mean, um, and, and I'm saying that trying it and and realizing how difficult it is. Um, this is very well done, and um, I, I think it gives you um, an insight to certain communities and, you know, um, some markets that maybe you don't go to and, and walk some certain streets that you haven't normally seen. And, um, it really makes you feel like you're there. And I think this is phenomenal work. I, I love seeing street photography. So, uh, Megan Wong, you killed it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. These, this specific set of three images, I think this was posted as one image also. So that says something about what they wanted to present, um, especially like close-up portrait, like close-up pic pictures of this market scene. I think uh, also Wong is uh, like a surname from China. And I believe this is, I would assume this is Chinatown in some place or maybe actually in China, who knows. Um, but I really love that three images were put together in one specific like one box yes it's almost like a roll of film and i'm wanting to see like a progression of more images and this turn into like motion some type of film and then that makes me want to learn more about this environment and the people and what they're all doing there and the delicious food in the market and what they're looking at um I love that I love that it's a triptych and there's three connected to that for sure good job Megan uh we have one more this one I thought was really beautiful I love the color what do you guys think about this one yeah the lighting is solid I mean you go the light source it's not in the frame and it's filling up her face and the color's dope like you said um yeah and, and the, just the overall aesthetic is is very uh i don't know if retro is the word but i i really like the overall vibe um that's given off it's cool yeah it's almost like retro and futuristic at the same time yeah like, like yeah I'm, I'm looking up i'm looking up the person who posted this picture to see if this is self-portrait or not and i really can't tell there's so many images that they've posted <laughs> Oh, uh, so many amazing images. Oh shit. Uh, look at this one. This is okay. Sorry. Um get off your yeah. phone, dude. I'm kidding. <laughs> Wait, what did you say? I said get off your phone. I'm kidding. <laughs> I was looking up the rest of the images posted by this Emily person. <laughs> We're getting a glimpse into our meetings that the three of us have had together too for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I love this. I definitely, I could see the portraiture is very strong. And um, I every time I look at this, actually, I don't know about you guys, I see more things and like things I didn't see before. So it kind of like sneaks up on me a little bit. And I'm also really loving um, the, the effect they're getting with like the blur and the fabric and the shininess of it and how that's kind of like reflecting back at the camera. Um, I also want to know what she's doing and what she's thinking about because she looks very pensive. She's looking down and <laughs> looking very thoughtful. Um, and again, I hope everyone took time to read some of these quotes. I love that everybody was really playing into highlighting their culture and their individual perspectives. Um, I loved that they're all different, uh, but really celebratory of who they are and where they come from. Um, so please, please, please check out that space. Um, start a dialogue, sit down with people, talk to people, learn from them. This is what this is all about. Um, and then start your own space at Visco. There's lots of spaces I'm following. I would love to follow yours.